Hey everybody, welcome back to the Closet Studio and this episode of the Zim's Video Journal episode 23. Um, the biggest thing that I have to talk about when it comes to the music is I've started using Facebook a lot different. So I want to talk about Facebook, social media, that kind of whole thing. I decided, so basically, in, from my perspective, Facebook has essentially b broke <laughs> from a... Uh, independent artist, independent musician, independent um, grassroots style of networking and whatnot. Um, Facebook is um, broken now because they are funneling you into buying ad time, buying, you know, paying to actually use the social networking aspect of it. They're They're limiting the reach that your posts get to the network that um, your friend, not only your friend network, but also the network, like, if you, so there's two different, um, well, I've noticed, <laughs> I've noticed, let me roll back, I've noticed a lot of people don't really know the nuances of Facebook very well, so I'll give a little bit of, um, discussion on that. There's the, your profile, which is you, you sign up, you have your thing, that's your profile, and then there are pages, which are, like, if you have a company, or in my case, a band, I create a page that represents my band. A lot of people still use a profile to represent their bands and, and businesses and stuff, which is fine, is whatever, but it's not the way it's designed. So anyways, you have your own profile, and then you have a page for your business or your band, and I have both. Um, and so, it was maybe a year and a half ago, or I don't know, not too long ago, but, but, um, but they started to make it so that, you know, things that get posted on your page or profile um, do not reach everybody that's interested in your page or profile. So um, it's just they have some algorithms they use. They decide what's the you know what they think people want to see type of things, what kind of things. And it's really frustrating because you know not everybody in your network is seeing the the things that you're trying to let them know about unless they go and seek it out and go find your page and look at that or or set up their their own profile. There's a bunch of options where you can have like you can look at different groups and things you know there's there's ways to use facebook but most people probably just you know log on turn it on you know create their profile and just let have the exist you know and, and do things like that which is you know fine it's the way people use it so i for a long time so when this whole like paid promotion of your posts started happening i had i found one workaround that was really great and because you know i have a profile and then A Rock has his own personal profile. I would put um, something on the band page, like, and then I noticed that if you posted anything that was like a link to something, if you ever posted something that was a link, and they still do this, if you link to something that could make you money, they would limit its reach. It, you wouldn't reach. So if you posted just some words, so just like a status update, the reach would be greater. If you posted a picture, the reach would be decent if you posted a link to somewhere the reach was horrible if you posted a link even to your own facebook event the reach was horrible so it's like i was like all right so that sucks but i noticed that if i posted a picture on the page and then i shared that picture and then i tagged a rock in that and myself in that picture that picture would get crazy reach it would just go all over the place it would like you know get into the hundreds and whatnot of people that saw that picture so i was like all right that was my workaround for a while so what i would start doing was like i would make a picture of something and then i would put the links and all that stuff in the description of the picture so that people could find it and do all that kind of stuff they stopped allowing that to happen um i just noticed last time i tried it was not long ago well, i'm trying to promote peace and love volume three and um i tried to do that thing and up oh, I can't, if I posted a picture on my page, I cannot tag myself or anybody else in that picture from like my profile page. So they figured out that loophole and closed it. So I was like, all right, whatever, that sucks, you know. And I've been trying really hard, um, as hopefully you guys know, that I'm pushing out this music. Um, and so I was like, what can I do? What what can I do from the with the situation that I'm in to get more people aware of my music and what I'm trying to do. 
And what I decided to do was just, you know, basically can the whole idea of having a personal profile and my now my personal profile is a business profile, is an extension of my band page. Um, I just been, you know, on your feed you have suggestions of people you may know. And I've just been adding all of them. And for um, a while I have up to like 2,000, you know, friends now, which is awesome. And so I just started adding all of them. And, um, and also in that I am emailing every single one of them um, a little description and link to my music. Um, and I'll get into that in a second. I'm, so there's a lot of things that I could tell you about here. Um, what I've discovered, so what I discovered when I was adding the kind of the, the main root of people that were kind of in my, you know, suggested users were a lot of other musicians and they tended to be a lot of rock musicians um, and that kind of thing. And, you know, rock musicians might be into my music, but I think um, I felt like more of the electronic heads would probably be into it a little bit more. So I, I went to like um, an electronic page, like a local like foundation nightclub, I forget what it was, and added a bunch of people that were in their friends list. And then that started giving me a lot more diverse options on the people you may know list. So I started adding that. And a couple of things that would happen if I ever went into somebody else's profile, it started adding their friends. Facebook would say, oh, you know, it looks like you're using this feature the way it was not intended. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'll stop doing that. Um, and then I just started adding just from the suggested users, which is great. And then, and then the other thing I noticed was if you, so since I'm emailing every single person, if you email them from the Facebook desktop, like on your computer, you, it would give you warnings and you'd start to get those, um, you know, would say the same thing. looks like you're using this feature, not like it was intended. And then it would say like, um, give you those captcha, right? The, the ones where you have to type the letters in to actually send the email. So I was like, okay, that's not working. I didn't even go there because the main place I've been doing this, and this is a big, um, loophole that they haven't filled in yet. And I'm just taking advantage of it for now. Um, and I'm sure it'll get cut off soon is, um, if I use the, the, the messenger app on my phone, it doesn't restrict me. I just can just go along and click and, um, send, you know, send everybody the email I want to send them and every single person. So every time somebody shows up as accepting my friend request, I go to their page, send them an email. And which is kind of what's cool about that aspect is when I do that and go to their page right at the top, it says what they do, like what their business is and all that stuff. And so I've been able to customize some of my messages saying, Oh, you work for this place. Awesome. I love that place. Or, you know, check this out. You might like this, blah, blah, you know, so I get a little bit of customization in there, but not, you know, not a ton. I'm just like blasting it out. And, you know, this leads me into the other, another conversation I want to have was I brought up a while back, um, you know, I don't know, episode 10 or something. I forget what it was when I was pushing out piece in the volume one and one of my family members came to me and said, called what I was doing spam. And it really like, I was really offended by that. Um, as, as time has gone on and I've thought more about it, you know, I don't think it's spam, but what I'm doing, I've gotten out of the thousands. I mean, there's probably thousands. I've sent thousands of emails now and out of all the thousands of emails, most of the emails don't get opened. Most, you know, I'd say over half of them don't get opened. You can tell because you can see the little check mark or not on the side of your thing. So I scroll down and see what's going on. Most of them don't get open, which is fine. I kind of expect that, you know, the main thing is most people don't know how to use Facebook. They don't know that that red little symbol in the top means somebody's trying to interact with you. Um, so that's like, one of the things I've noticed a lot of people don't realize is that those red boxes on the top of your pro on the top of your feed page, your backdoor page, that means somebody's trying to talk to you, interact with you in some way, either an event invite, you know, a lot of it's stuff you don't care about, but some of it maybe. Um, so that's something. But anyways, so a lot of them don't get read. I get a lot more than I expected positive feedback. Like a lot of like, I'll check it out, things like that. Whether they do or not, I don't know. Um, I know that our plays, you know, we do get more plays on our band camp page because you can see the stats on that. So there is more plays. It's not a crazy amount of plays, but there is a good, uh, you know, more plays going on. So that's cool. So there is 
a direct relationship. There is, people are checking it out through that. And then every once in a while, I get like somebody actually goes, oh, I listened to it, it's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm like, great, have a conversation with them, do that thing, um, and it's great. There's very few people who actually come back at me with like some kind of like, um, I don't know, they don't like it, basically. They come back to me saying they don't like it, like three or four people have said, don't spam me, you know, and then I just, you know, I'm like, well, cool, I won't, um, let me talk about spam for a second. So, I, I guess what I'm doing is, it can, it falls on the spectrum of spam, sure. I don't, I don't disagree with that. I put, if, if you took a spectrum and said, hardcore spam over here, and just, you know, personal, you know, somebody you know directly, you have a personal conversation over here, I'd say if the halfway point is right here, I'd say I'm closer to this side of the halfway point. Because the way I see it, you're accepting my friend request. You're accepting me as a friend. So, hey, you've already decided I want to know what this person has to say. So, and then I go, okay, great. I'm going to send you, I'm going to tell you what it is I have to say. And I've already just explained at the beginning of this video, posting something on your feed does not do that. Most people do not see that. So I'm trying to cut through the clutter, the noise, and the, the way Facebook has decided to restrict what people see by going, I'm just going to send you a direct message of what it is I want you to know. So that's what I'm doing. So by you accepting my friend request, you're telling me I want to know about this person. So it's great. I'm doing that. And then I do that. And then, um, you know, then I get labeled, I get potentially labeled spam. But then there's the other part of it, which, okay, Sure, I'm mass emailing this. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm copy and pasting the same message to everybody. It falls under the spectrum of spam, but it's a direct link to me. It's something that's of me. It's like you know who's sending it. You know everything. It's not you can tell. You can go to my profile. And look, hey, this person is not some bot. This person is not just some random person. This person actually is a real person, and I can have a conversation with them. And if you don't like that, it's spam. That it's um, you know that it's a cut and paste email to you um, and, and it offends you and, and does that kind of thing. It's digital. It's an email. It's so easy. You can unfriend me. You can delete the email. No harm, no foul. It's just like, whatever, you know, it's like, I just, I just find it ironic and silly. And, you know, I had people that know me personally, I all, all the time I say life is a dark comedy. And this is just one of those things why, how people get so upset and potentially get so upset with something that's so simple and so ridiculous. It's just, I don't know, I've just turned it into a game for myself and I try to win those people over, which one person came to me and said, I would I would never listen to this. So I asked them, all right, what is what kind of music do you like? And they're like, oh, I like this kind of electronic music, this kind of electronic music. I was like, oh, perfect, because my music is totally inspired on electronic music. You should check out this track, you should check out this track, this is what I did with this track. And they're like, oh, okay, I'll check it out. And then they came back like, damn, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Blah blah blah. You know, so I, I turned around, and that's the other thing. If a, if it's a real spam, what I call a real spam, you email them, and they'll either talk to you in some weird grammatic language that you can't understand because it's some weird thing going on. I don't know. They're trying to get money. Out. I don't know what they're trying to do. But you, you can just tell that, like, I'm actually having a conversation with you. I want to talk to you about why I don't think it's spam, and, and I just had a conversation with you. And the bottom line of all this, I mean, for me, the bottom line of all this is, like, I'm just on the hustle, man. I'm just trying to get my music out there and let people know about it and let people see the name, the Zim and A-Rock, and what we're all about. And, you know, if you want to blow it off, that's fine. But at least now you know the Zim and A-Rock, hopefully. And um, the next time... You know, you'll see a show poster. Oh, the Zim and Eric. That was that. That was that clown that was trying to get me to listen to his thing. Oh, whatever. Oh, you see a post that some music blog put on. Oh, the Zim and Eric. Oh, that's that same guy that tried to do that thing that had that show that did that thing. Oh, we're playing another show. Oh, that's that same guy. You know, so it's just like, you know, no press is bad press. You know that that kind of thing. So I'm waiting for somebody to like to to try to come back and um you know, I'll send them my email and they'll try to like post on my line or post, don't, you know, don't listen to this guy. He's a clown. And I'll be like, thank you so much for getting my name out there even more, you know, but I don't know. So, but I've also, at the moment, I've decided to slow down a little bit on it because the only thing I could see being a problem, um, is if somebody decides to like report my page. Um, and if multiple people do that and then Facebook like turns off my page, which, you know, would suck. But 
you know, I'll just, so I decided just to slow down for a second, let this, what I've done now kind of just go. But, but like I said, there's been a surprising amount of positive um, response and feedback for what I'm doing. Um, and I guess, I mean, now that I've, I've done all that talking about Facebook, what did I miss anything? I don't know. I, I think I, I covered all I, I felt about Facebook. I just want to talk about the idea of spam, what I'm doing, the kind of loopholes of Facebook. But, um, you know, basically check out. Oh, so there's one more thing. So I'm definitely getting more listens, definitely getting positive feedback. People like it. I'm stoked on that. Haven't had anybody come back. Uh, okay, so I've had other people. I've had people say, oh, yeah, check out my things. Let me know what you think. So I'm like, all right, great. And I'm trying to figure out, I was like, how can I do this in a way that I can give them honest, positive feedback without, you know, upsetting them, perhaps, if I don't like it. So I just, I'm just like, I'm just being honest. And, um, and I'm good at my art school, my art schooling, essentially, learning how to critique something. That is one of the things that I know how to do best. This is like, if somebody gives me something artistic to look at, listen to or whatever i know how to say whether or not i like it or don't like it and why and be able to label reasons and give just a foundation for that that's one of the things i've always been good at and especially came out when i was in art school at uw i a lot of my professors were like man you should have my job because the way i talked about things and obviously i like to talk so it's not a not a big stretch for me to kind of just keep going with those ideas. So when somebody comes back to me with their music and says, hey, check out my stuff, I'm gonna check it out. I give honest listens, because that's what I want from everybody else. I want people to give it an honest listen. Um, you know, I'll give it an honest listen, see what I like about it, see what I don't like about it, and then talk about that in a constructive way and not just be like, I don't like it, or not just, I don't wanna, I think the worst thing anybody could do to me, and I don't wanna do this to anybody else, is say, oh, it's great. And that's it, and never, and but but not think it's great, think it's crappy, and but say it's great. I, I think as an artist, I never want anybody to ever do that to me. So I don't want to do that to anybody else. If if I think there's something that could be done differently that would enhance their sound, I'm gonna tell it to them. If they get offended or they expect, you know, that's the hard part about being a being an artist is sometimes you get overly attached to your own ideas and think, and you put so much time and effort and energy into it that you you lose sight of what it really is. And so if somebody has negative feedback on it, it hurts you. It hits you hard because it's, you know, it's an extension of you, you know? So it's like somebody's trying to ridicule you when it's not. You need to be able to step away from that thing, put that thing that you're working on on a table or whatever out here, outside of yourself and say, okay, I made this. Now it's time for it to live on its own and then see if it holds up. And that's what I want. That's what I'm trying to do with my music. See if it holds up. Um, and so I give honest feedback on that, on whatever somebody gives to me, because I, I want people to give it an honest listen, because I believe if somebody gives my music and what I'm doing an honest listen, they'll start to hear what it is I'm actually doing. They'll start to hear the nuance of the integration of the electronic sounds and the, and the folk rock sounds. They'll hear the content of my lyrics that I'm actually saying something and it's not just fluff. They'll hear the things that... Um, I put the they'll basically hear the love I put into to the this art and this this what I'm working on. So that's that's all I want from somebody is is an honest listen and that's all I want to give back to that. And um so what I've noticed is people are listening to the tracks, but I'm still not getting very many downloads. I've over the last basically since I started this whole Facebook thing, I think one person has downloaded the tracks. Um I know these days it's so easy just to click the link and listen again. But, I, but, you know, it's just another sign. If I can get people to actually download it, it just means they value it a little bit more, and that makes me excited. So I hope people, I hope you will go to it, download it, put it in your iTunes, crank it up on your car, you know, crank it up in your home stereo, just listen to it. And if you are a DJ, there are clear electronic elements, drum and bass, um, you know, some, some trip-hop breakbeat type stuff in some of them. Some house, definitely house, like the song, um, Revolution song, totally a house track all the way through. Um, man, put it in a mix, you know, put these songs in a mix somewhere, even if it's part of it, whatever, there's elements, I don't know, put them in a mix, I will spam your mix. If you're a SoundCloud user, I will just spam your SoundCloud all over the place, I will be so stoked if that happens. And if anybody likes these tracks enough, 
that they want to make a remix of them, I'm down to, I'll send you my stem tracks, I'll do all that stuff, you can have, you can go to town on them, and make some crazy remixes, I, I would love it, I'll spam that all over the place, so, um, so, there you go, those are some things, I'll put links to the SoundCloud page in my, um, in this, the description of this video on YouTube, so be sure to go to YouTube, subscribe to the Zim video on YouTube, and, um, and like this, you know, video, share it with your friends, I'll put the link to the SoundCloud in the description down there. I'll put the my, um, I'll put the Bandcamp page in the description down there. Um, and like I said before, what we're trying to do, if you do like the music, please support it by paying for it, and um, that'll help us get it on iTunes um, through CD Baby. Um, I use a service called CD Baby. It costs about 130 bucks to publish on CD Baby, and then they'll push it out to iTunes, to Spotify, to Amazon MP3. To a whole bunch of other digital networks just to get the sound out there hopefully people will dig it and try to seek us out through that um, when that happens but um unfortunately right now you know my own personal situation the band hasn't been playing a lot so we don't have any kind of band fund anyways if we did it's been spent on uh working on the albums um and then also you know i'm i got kids and i got you know rent and all that stuff i just do not have the budget to put any money into this so i'm hoping that i can generate some Support from the greater community, and um, and it's you know, and it's not like a Kickstarter where I'm I don't ha I actually have the product. If you like it, just kick down and um, dollar two dollar five dollars ten dollars twenty dollars whatever it is you want. Go to the Bandcamp page, put that amount in there, and it'll make its way to us. And then I'll publish our song songs onto iTunes, which I really want to do because I want to get these out to the greater community. All right, that felt like a pretty long one. Um, so I'm just going to wrap this up. This is The Zim at um, The Zim's Video Journal, episode 23. I'm in the closet to you. Thanks for joining, and I'll check you next time.